Hey everyone, thanks for joining us again today for another Home Talk Live. I'm Melissa from Minnesota and we want you to comment in right away. Let us know where you're tuning in from, where's the city that you live in. Um, today, like I said, I'm in Minnesota, it's so cold. We're going to be doing a really cute little craft to show you a kind of a family photo idea as the headline says, but also um, you can make it as a gift. So it's a photo board book and I'll show you we're gonna jump right into it. I have these board books for my kids and instead of buying like a custom made one, I'm actually just gonna revamp a current one. So I like these because they're nice and sturdy. And um, the first step is to just paint the whole thing black. Now this step does need to dry overnight. So um, I already have one prepped and ready to go. But what I used was just normal acrylic paint and a paintbrush, super easy. Um, it kind of gets messy, so just cover the whole thing to be black so that eventually it looks like this. Don't forget to comment in. Let us know where you're coming from. My name is Melissa. Today is Monday. I, I contribute to Home Talk Live every Monday, so hashtag Melissa Mondays. Um, don't forget to comment in and let us know where you're tuning in from. Today we are making a photo board book. So the first step was to paint it black, and now we're going to use our photos that I printed out and cut them out, um, get them sized up correctly for the book. I'm just using a paper cutter. We wanna make sure there's no white showing. And these I printed with a normal inkjet printer. And with, um, you could use laser or you could use just an inkjet printer. It doesn't really matter. Um, just make sure that it's on normal paper not on photo paper. And why is that, Melissa? Well, we're going to be using Mod Podge to, um, to attach it to the book. And the Mod Podge is going to interact with this paper by soaking it thoroughly and attaching it. So if you use photo paper, it's going to be too thick and heavy to make a photo book the way we want it to end up. So. Um, this step, we're just cutting these out of paper, and I printed these with normal inkjet or laser printer will do. Awesome. Thanks to all of you for tuning in across the world. we got people from California and Texas, Indiana, Canada, um, all over the place. Awesome. Thank you guys so much, much for tuning in. So a little story about this photo book. We have a good family friend who um, has kids my same age. And so I made a photo book like this for her daughter when her daughter turned four. And it's held up really well, and she loves it. So she asked me if I could make one for our sons. Both of our sons are turning four now, a couple years later. So that's what we're doing today. One of these cute little boys is my son, Nick. And then the other one is her son, Weston. So this is them as babies. This is them now. <laughs> and... Uh, Comment in, if, send some hearts if you love this idea. We're gonna be putting together an adorable photo book. So my little photo book has rounded edges. I have one of these little like punches, but you can also just do this with a scissors easy enough. Just stick it in there, get the edge rounded off. Okay, and so this one here, since what I did was um, I just Created this online, so the text is just white text. See how that matches up nice? And then we're gonna be attaching it with um, Mod Podge. Awesome. Don't forget to chime in, let us know where you're tuning in from. We've got people all over the states. Anyone from other countries? I know someone from Belgium had commented earlier. That was awesome. I would really Switzerland. love- Switzerland. I would really love to know too, if you guys have an idea, if this is inspirational to you, who would you make a book like this for? Do you have any adorable little kids in your life that would love a board book? Do you wanna make one as like a family memory book or you can make one for going on vacation or a trip? Lots of cool ideas with this project. So the next step, very easy, we're just gonna be throwing some Mod Podge down and pressing it into place, okay? So I'm gonna go in order and I'm not gonna start with the cover I'm gonna start here. These other ones I already have pre-cut and ready to go. So all we're gonna do is, I usually coat the book first in Mod Podge. 
Am I saying that right? Yeah, mm-hmm. Mod Podge. Yeah. <laughs> and not I, Modge Podge? Yeah, I know. Everybody says I always, Modge I Podge. I used to say it that way, too. Okay, so we're just going to make sure we got a lot on there. We want it to thoroughly... And you're just using a regular in. brush to do that. Yeah. Yep. Real easy. And actually, this technique can be applied to a lot of different things. I've also used this technique to attach photos to wood blocks. Okay, Whoa. so the thing is, is it's important that your paint is fully dry so that the Mod Podge doesn't lift it up. Okay, so you got to make sure that paint dries like a full 24 hours. And then also, it's important that you get plenty on there so that it really soaks into the image and it stays on there for a long time. It's real durable. <laughs> so, I love Victoria's comment. She'd make one to send to her ex so he can be reminded of what he lost. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my gosh, like pictures of you? <laughs> I think it's great. Other people have said they'd make one for their grandparents. Oh, lovely. Um, for their grandparents' birthdays, things like that. That's lovely. Yeah. Um, I had a couple questions coming in asking about the book they missed the beginning and wondering where you got your board book from. Okay, so I had um, just a board book at home. Like, it was one just like this, where it's just a kid's book. And I like to choose ones that are a little thinner, but any, it doesn't matter how thick it is. It can be really thick. The important thing is you just have your measurements correct. You go into a Word document or whatever, and you, you size your photos to be exactly the right size. Then you print them out with your printer. Inkjet or laser will work. Just make sure you're not doing it on photo paper. You want it to be on just regular paper, okay? So that's the first page. So cute. And as you can see, mine was rounded, so I rounded all the corners. And they're just going to fit perfect there. Make sure that you do your measurements and you don't... Um, overlook that step okay we want it to look like the book was meant to be like this so a couple more tips about this project the reason we paint it black first is because although the photos aren't very see-through once they're soaked with Mod Podge you don't want anything th showing through okay so you have to make sure that it's all one color underneath I think white would work too mm, I just gotcha. like the way that black looks because it really brings out the colors in the photo um, so this first step, we're making sure we put plenty of Mod Podge underneath the photo, painting it on. And then when I line up the photo into place, we start from the middle and we press down and go out towards the edges. Now the thing too is you could use like a credit card, that would work just fine. This is like a... One of those brushes that, or not brushes, but like tools that you use for spackling. Yeah. For spackling. yeah. <laughs> so, so the thing is, it has to be plastic. If it's metal, like a drywall knife or something, that would rip the paper. So you, we just have to be gentle, nice and careful. Okay. Perfect. So for those of you who are asking about the paint, she just used a really basic acrylic paint to paint the book black. And she did it the day before so that it could fully dry. Because when you add Mod Podge, if it's not fully dry, you're going to have a messy issue. Yeah, it can lift up some of the black and then it can cause a problem. So make sure you get that step done ahead of time. It looks like you also lined up your pictures in order in advance so that you knew which corners to clip. Yeah. To curve them. Yep. And not all board books are going to have clip corners. Obviously, each project is going to be slightly different than the other. So just make sure you're doing your measurements, planning out accordingly. One of our commenters said that she gets board books from the dollar store. Yeah. Um, or, you know, at craft, uh, not craft, at like thrift. garage sales and stuff. Okay. And then she makes them for lots of her kids. And, thri awesome. and thrift stores. Like, super inexpensive to find. But the thing is, is super expensive to buy. Holy moly, if you buy a custom made photo board book they're like at least twenty dollars on shutterfly mm -hmm. or those other sites so that's why i had this idea because um costs a couple bucks to make it's mostly just ink for your printer that's the expense here right and that's a regular printer regular ink regular flat thin white paper you guys you don't yeah. need to use cardstock don't use don't use photo paper just regular flat paper yeah because the photo paper is not gonna attach it's not the right consistency to interact with the mod podge and then the cardstock might be kind of heavy for it to stay. Um, and like I said, I know it may seem like it's not very durable, but I made one of these two years ago for our friends. And they said that it's still in awesome shape. Like they still have it cool, totally usable. 
and in really good shape. So again, this step, really important to go from the middle out. Just like this and get all corners pressed down. Okay, so now I'm just finishing this step up. We got a few more pages. This is a great time to share this video, you guys. Share it with your friends. Share it with people you know who have little kids. Share it with grandparents that you know. Um, really cute idea. And with the holidays coming up, it's an idea that people can use for gift giving too. That's what I'm going to use mine for. I'm giving it to a special little boy for his fourth birthday. We've had a number of people asking about how you make sure you've got the right size on um, of the picture when you're yeah. putting it on your on your computer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I sized mine with my um, program, which is basically like an open office version of Word. Okay, so but they all have the ruler guides on them, right? Yeah. So all you have to do um, when you have your photo in the, in your Word doc, if you hold down the Shift key it'll keep the um, size constant as you make it bigger or smaller. It'll keep the ratio of your picture. That's what I mean, yeah. It won't, yeah. it won't like squish it awkward horizontally or vertically. It'll keep the ratio. And then you can just um, use the ruler tool after you've measured your book to know exactly what size you need. And the size I'm making is six inches by six inches. So each of these I printed out on their own sheet. This one has a lot of excess glue. Whoops. <laughs> That's all right. Now, a couple of people have asked about the Mod Podge. Is there another glue you could use, or is there a specific kind of Mod Podge that you recommend? Okay, so I would recommend matte um, versus gloss. I think mine's like, yeah, mine's matte. Um, up to you. I do think Mod Podge is the best way to go because the step at the end, it's not just an adhesive. We're also gonna use it as a sealer. Okay, so, so you are going to paint over top. Yeah, definitely. Um, we just got to throw all these on first. But yes, the Mod Podge is the way to go, I think. Okay. We did have one photographer who chimed in and said that she makes these for her clients. Which really? Which is really awesome. Oh my gosh, no way. Okay, I would love to hear more about that, whoever chimed in. <laughs> so do you use this same process? How do you make yours? Do you order it through like a professional company? And also, what? how do you print yours? Do you print yours just like I did on regular paper? I'd be very curious to know. Do you remember her name, Paula? I don't, unfortunately. Okay. Well, it was that's a little okay. while ago. That's okay. Hopefully but she'll come back We have back had a number in. of people who said, why not just get them made online? Which you certainly can do. This is just a, a lot a cheaper cheap option <laughs> for those of you who don't want to spend the money. Yeah, I mean, this is going to take me like total of 45 minutes from getting the Word doc prepped, printed, and then totally done. So... Um, for me, it's worth it to save the $20, $30, but I know some people aren't as crafty inclined, so. <laughs> okay, so we're almost done with this. Aren't these pictures adorable, you guys? These little <laughs> boys are just the best of friends, and I can't wait to see the look on little Weston's face when he gets this book. Um, I, I guess another reason that, to me, I wanted to hand make it is that it would take me just as long to go through the ordering process and get everything set up on like Shutterfly as it is to just make it myself. And making it myself is a lot more heartfelt for a gift. That's my personal opinion, so. We've had other people who said they use that Mod Podge transfer formula for um, wooden toy blocks, like kids' blocks, kind of like you said, you put pictures oh, yeah. on, um, on wooden, uh, I don't know, like on bigger wood blocks that you yeah. used in the home on. Your end table and stuff? Yep, decorations. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think that'd be really cute on little blocks for kids if you had little images on each side. So I haven't heard of anyone yet. Has anyone commented in from overseas? We always have like someone from Peru or England chiming in. We had Mexico and okay. Switzerland. Oh, Switzerland. Um, cool. And I thought we had Belgium earlier. Okay, last one, guys. And there's a, num a number of great suggestions about putting words on each page. You certainly yeah. could add other things besides just an image if you wanted. Yeah. Make it like even almost a little more scrapbook-like if you wanted to go that route. Yep, so I'm actually gonna add um, text onto mine too. I'm gonna use um, paint pens, Sharpie paint pens. That's gonna be one of the next steps coming up. Um, because the reason I like to use paint pens is just that it takes a little longer to dry, but again, the handwritten look 
it's more cute. special to me, okay? Yeah, cute. Yeah, so we're gonna use that very next. Now you'll notice that I skipped a page. I have an adorable picture of these boys <laughs> um, peeing in the woods with their pants down. <laughs> so I didn't want to show that to everybody, but that's what goes here, so. <laughs> because it's a private gift, we can do things like that. Yeah, yeah. I know that Weston's gonna giggle when he gets to that page. He's gonna be like, there's us peeing in the woods, Nick. <laughs> Okay, so now for the cover, same process, but the thing we're going to do a little different is we're also going to poke a hole through it and tie on a way to close the book because once you add the photos, it kind of gets thicker and it doesn't close as nice. So I'm going to put little ribbons on the bottom and the top to tie it together. We've got people chiming in from Belize down in Central, Amer um, Central America and New Zealand. United Kingdom, awesome. Thanks, you guys. Oh my gosh, It's great awesome. to have you all on from across the world. Yes. It's super exciting. So, as I said earlier, I am Melissa, and I um, blog at Welcome to the Woods. That's my blog. I do a lot of DIY and craft stuff, and I present here every Monday at 2 p.m. Central Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time for Home Talk. So, hashtag Melissa Mondays. Chime in if you've seen my other projects if you've done any of my other projects, um, I did like a hydrangea wreath that went really well and I know a lot of people tried that one. Um, I also did a couple pumpkin crafts. If you want to go back and look, a fabric pumpkin and a pumpkin made out of a pizza box and a toilet paper roll. So lots of cool ideas. And a pallet bookshelf, oh, yeah. that yep. was super cool. Yeah, people liked the pallet bookshelf as well. Okay, so now this Next step that I want to do, just want to make sure this edge is totally down. So some of this project does include dry time, but um, in general it doesn't take that long. Okay, so now we're going to take a big darning needle, like this, and some black yarn. And since mine, I picked kind of a thinner book. We're going to be able to poke right through it, I'm hoping, <laughs> um, so that we can tie it off and have a little yarn to close the book, okay? For those of you who missed it in the beginning, this is just a really simple um, cardboard book. Any of the children's books that you find that are a little thicker cardboard at um, the dollar store or at garage sales um, that your kids are done with work really great. And then they, uh, Melissa painted every edge inside outside with a really simple black acrylic paint just really basic and then she let it dry overnight then I used Mod Podge to coat the paint and attach the photo and then um, some of the last steps here that we're getting to we are gonna seal it with Mod Podge again but right now I'm adding a little a way to tie it okay so that we can make sure it's closed once we add the photos to the book it gets a little thicker Look at how cute. Okay, so I used a darning needle. They're really big and thick. Nice. Um, and easy to use, so to get through that. And I'm gonna just cut off some excess yarn. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the back, okay? So we can tie a little bow, really make it look like a present. And you could use other materials for that as well, besides yarn. Yep, you could, you could, use... yep, you could also use little ribbons. I had a little some ribbons, but I thought the black yarn would look the cutest. That's what I went with today. But yes, you definitely can use ribbon. So again, we're just using the darning needle to poke through. Now, if you picked a board book that's really thick, you might have to use hot glue to attach a way to tie it closed. But I would plan on having a way to tie it closed because like I said, once you add the photos, it gets a little bit thick and it doesn't close tightly unless you have a way to tie it. So. I like to do this. Just tie it up. Don't forget, you guys, comment in you and. Want to tie it on that side? Um, yeah, I do. I want to tie it on the back. But don't you want the knot on this side so that the. Oh, you're right, you're right. Is... Oh, thank you, Paula. Yep. Yep, you are right. Okay, I gotta shove it back through. But don't forget to comment in, you guys. In. Oh, yeah, smart. This is why you're my sister. <laughs> <laughs> you're so helpful. Um, okay, so don't forget you guys, comment in, let us know who you would make this board book for. Let us know um, if you've seen a project like this before, if you've done a project like this before with transferring photos with Mod Podge onto something. Um, 
and let us know where you're tuning in from. I'm from Minnesota, and oh my gosh, the cold weather has come. It is freezy chilly today. Okay, awesome. So now, when we wanna close this later, we're not done, but when we wanna close this later, we just tie these in a bow. Looks oh, so cute. cute. Very handmade. Isn't that adorable? Okay, so we're not done, like I said. Nick and Weston's birthdays, their fourth birthdays are just a couple weeks away. We're giving this to Weston as a gift. Um, but the next thing that I wanna do before I start Mod Podging over to seal it is come through and write little messages. So I didn't have the text printed out already on the image. I wanted to use Sharpie paint pens to handwrite something in, inside. These are oil based and they do take a little bit. Oh, sorry, this one's water based. Never mind. But they are very um, durable. And you can find ones that are oil based too that'll probably be even more durable. But you can just pick these up at a craft store. They're pretty inexpensive and they're really um, practical for lots of different crafts. Actually, I think I'm gonna use the white one to show you guys how that one shows up. For this first page, I think I wanna write a little message. How about something like, see, it kinda looks like a chalkboard. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like your handwriting, you could certainly print out text beforehand and Mod Podge it in just like the pictures. Yeah. Look how cute that is. Okay, so like I said, we need to let it dry a little, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna um, close that totally, but I'll show you another page that we'll write on quick. Okay, so like this one, we always go to the beach. So one of the pages, I glued on images of us swimming at the beach, and I'm gonna just write at the beach at top. Now you wanna do this step before you do the last step of like sealing it with Mod Podge because we want this to also be sealed. And I think when the Mod Podge is on, the, the permanent mark, or well, the paint pens would still work, but the best thing to do is get that sealed underneath the Mod Podge as well. So again, gotta let those dry a little bit. But I wanted to show you another idea too while we give this a second to dry. If you don't wanna tie them together when you're making your board book, you can also attach a button on the front and then a loop in the back, kind of like this. See? And then when you have your loop in the back, you can just hook it around the button, which I had that idea, but I couldn't figure out, since this particular button that I liked had a big loop, like had a big metal thing, I couldn't figure out how to get it flush. But that's another idea of how to close it, okay? Okay, so last step, when we're done attaching all the photos to our photo book and we're done writing everything that we wanna write, we're going to seal it, okay? And this step, I'm not gonna show you the whole book because you need to take it page by page, kind of. Um, it's gonna get a little messy, but I'll show you what I do. I just coat it horizontally, first, then vertically, just so that it's all one direction. You're gonna slightly see the lines of Mod Podge when you're done. It's not gonna be like super visible, but this step is really important because this is how it remains durable and the kid looking through the book constantly won't rip the pages. Because <laughs> that last layer of Mod Podge kind of protects the photo. Or all those family members who come over to visit and they're just like, oh, this is so cute. And they're all thumbing through it multiple times. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. So if you have a little one in your life, don't forget to share this idea. Um, at Home Talk, we share tons of DIY ideas, really cute um, projects that you can do. So be sure to like, subscribe, share, and let people know what you're watching right now. So every page we're going to do this. We're going to cover in Mod Podge, seal it up. And then as it dries, I'm gonna dry it the same way that I did when I painted it black. I'm just gonna separate each page, turn it up on its side, and let it dry overnight. So as you can see, um, well usually after I get all the Mod Podge on, I just kind of lightly go over it with, see, nice, that looks good. 
I lightly go over it with the paintbrush to get rid of the lines because when the Mod Podge dries you don't want it to look streaky. And it is going to dry totally clear. I'm using a matte, not a gloss. When it's done, you're not even, you're going to see just the photo. You're not even going to see the Mod Podge, but it's going to be really durable. Could you use gloss? We had one person ask if that was You can. Option. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. It just depends on what finish you want. I think gloss would look really nice. Make it look more like a real photo, I think. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So then, like I said, when we're done with that step covering each one with a sealant of Mod Podge, we're just going to flip it up on its side with each page separated like that to dry. Okay, because each one's going to have tons of Mod Podge on it. And as you can see, I don't know if anyone's still just joining us, but look at how cute this is. Each page has an adorable little photo, and this is going to be a present for Weston's fourth birthday. He can thumb through this and be reminded of all the fun times he has with his best friend, Nick. Don't forget to share guys, send in your hearts and comment in if you know anybody that you would make this for. I think this is an awesome DIY gift idea and I just wanna say thank you everyone for tuning in today for another Home Talk Live. Again, my name is Melissa and I'm from Welcome to the Woods blog. See you later.